Hey everybody, it's Chris and Tony back with another uh, Tiger Sox review for the Blue uh, Collar Beer Gourmet. You startled me. I startled you. Uh, back from a, a short hiatus. Uh, Mostly my fault. You know, life gets in the way while you're making other plans. Um, we had birthdays and weddings and uh, fiancés with uh, sinus migraines and um, emergency any number, yeah, emergency room visits. So uh, yeah, any number of things have gotten in the way, but uh, we are back and we're better than ever. And uh, Actually, as we speak, we um, both uh, the uh, Detroit and Boston yeah. are engaged in a game, which that's, was tied two to two at last I checked. That's so, what I thought of uh, as we were here. She was talking about earlier. It's the Tiger Sox series, and it's the second series of this season. So it just so happens it's Detroit and Boston. And, uh, it's game three today, and the first two have gone to my boys. Air boys, so yeah. They have. Hopefully, they uh, complete the sweep today. Sorry. No, 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 it's, you know, it's, it's, it's early me. in the season. Go ahead. It, Do it. Clock me. No, no, the whole point of this is we all come together under the guise of craft beer. Okay. So, um, and besides that, at least you're not a damn Yankees fan. Yeah. Uh, that would be a yeah, different story altogether. If you're a Yankees fan, you're watching this, you know. This is for you. Oh, yeah. I, wasn't, I really wasn't going to go that route. I was just going to no, say, no, no, let's no, talk I, about beer, not baseball. But, whoa. Well, you're a Red Sox fan. Exactly. I mean, you're you're you kind know, of supposed uh, to do that. But, uh, yeah. And I would hope that any Yankees fan out there who watches this channel regularly would give me a, a middle finger emoji in that's the right. comments uh, right back. Because oh, that's man. how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, uh, we're that'd not be, supposed to cooperate. It would be great if you just inadvertently just now started like a giant uh, exchange with somebody for like weeks and months during the whole season. Remember that review of a... Uh... Suddenly the Beantown Militia shows up in uh, in South Har uh, Bronx and yeah. says, all right, now we settle this once and for all. But we're glad baseball's back. Um, Indeed. It's, it's yeah. been the, it's the seventh day of the season, so uh, Tigers have already had two rainouts, so they've played, yeah, they've played less games than basically every other team in, in Major League Baseball. But, you know, they say April showers do bring May flowers, so... They say that. Perhaps, they say a lot of things. Perhaps Mother City will be dotted in, in uh, flowers. These guys are so beautiful. I am. Three and one. So this is one of those um, definitely I, I wanted to share because it's uh, it's it's a bigger bottle. And two, um, this is not this does not uh, uh, conform uh, to the uh, usual just, standards uh, of blue collar beer gourmet. This was a thirteen dollar bottle. But this oh, is the Bitches Brew, Miles Davis Bitches Brew from Dogfish Head yep. to commemorate the 40th anniversary of Miles Davis' album. Um, I'm going to see if I can maybe fit it into uh, the comments, but I, I would love to show the memo that simply says, uh, new Miles Davis uh, entitled um, Bitches Brew, uh, please advise, from I think it was Capitol Records where he had the uh, album. So yeah. Yep. Um, and I did not set up uh, uh, the, the song that I wanted to play, but it's it's all right. The point being, uh, huge Miles Davis fan, always have been. Really, really sorry that I didn't get a chance to see him. One of those cases whereby if you get a chance to see somebody that you want to, spend the, and if you've got the money, just do it. Just do it. do it. I wish I'd seen Miles Davis back in 90 when I had a chance to when he came to my town, my hometown of Kansas City, and I didn't do it, and so I've never seen him live and never will. And uh, I kind of regret that, quite frankly. But, um, a, a, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Miles Davis fan. We're both fans of Dogfish Heads yes, uh, beers. Very much um, so. You know, I've, I've never had a bad one. Some are better than others, yeah. obviously, but I've never had a beer where I just thought, I won't drink that again, ever. Um, That's true. Dog, dogfish, is, as, as you probably all know, are very playful. They're very <laughs> innovative. They use ingredients that are uh, kind of all over the map, and uh, they're known for their... Uh, they made Midas oddball, Touch. Oddball uh, beers, really. Midas mm -hmm. Touch is the beer that uh, the, the uh, recipe was taken right off the wall. Right. Of, uh, an ancient tomb. An, an ancient, ancient recipe. Tomb. Tomb. So, uh, so even this one, maybe in the comments, one of you can uh, chime in. It's This This is ale brewed with honey and gesho. And I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. G-E-S-H-O. I did not do the homework. If anybody wants to enlighten us on uh, what gesho is... Um, Please feel free. Do you want to read the, uh, the we other? Can, we can always Google it, I guess. Just uh, the descriptor. Yep, Miles Davis. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Miles Davis' seminal Bitches Brew album was a game changer, a bold fusion of rock, funk, and jazz. To honor the 40th anniversary release, Dogfish has created a bold, dark beer that is a fusion of three threads Imperial Stout and one thread Honey Beer with Gesho Root. Okay, so we, we did say it was a root, so. That's about the extent of our knowledge. 
Like the album, this beer will age with the best of them. To hear the music and the story that inspired this beer, go to www.milesdavis.com backslash brew. That's another thing about uh, the people at Dogfish. Um, I always butcher his last name, but the Sam Conley, oh, Conley, Conley, Conley. Yeah. I always screw his last name up. You've all probably seen him. He's very, uh, he's not shy when it comes to getting on social media and making videos and stuff. But the, the cool thing about Dogfish is not only are their beers awesome, they're very uh, big on music. And they actually, there's another beer available uh, right now. Like, I think it's just simply called Beer to, uh, beer to, oh, beer to Drink Music Music too. too yeah. or yeah. Uh -huh. so, yeah. I haven't tried that one yeah. yet. But Sam is very uh, vocal about his love for music. And I, I think he was a, a rock star in a previous life. <laughs> okay, so let's bust this boy open. And this does come in going. with a 9% ABV, so uh, I may get another bottle to... Wow, yeah. smell, uh, it's it's a, it's just like a combination of malt and yeast and... Yeah. Uh, oh, this is dark. <laughs> and, <laughs> My and goodness. A lot of chocolatey, actually, a, a chocolatey notes on top of everything. Like, I'm thinking there was probably chocolate malt and chocolate. Uh, yeah, well... <sighs> yeah. This beer smells fantastic. <laughs> it really, truly does. Mm. I want to burn a candle this morning. Mm. And this is, I mean, this is so dark. And even pouring it, it's almost like a, it's almost got like a thickness to it. It, it reminded me of like of you just poured Quaker State into a glass and then threw, threw a little bit of water in it to, to, you know, dilute it a little bit. It is that dark. I mean, it's pouring. Let me take this out here. So. Uh, I'd say it probably has a... Uh... A low uh, carbonation. I'm not seeing a lot of bubbles popping up to the top. Yeah. Um, well, your the head on your glass is uh, somewhat, somewhat resilient. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see if we can give it a nice, good swirl, like always. If it, swirl. Uh, if the head remains. Here's the label one more time. If you want to look at it again. It's just like the album cover. Just like the album cover, exactly. So. And oh, I, now I'm picking up that honey. I didn't pick up before, but. Uh, <sighs> The cocoa is just cements. I mean, it's 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 profound. It's so intense. And I'm getting like a spice uh, composition, like um, uh, like maybe a trace of cinnamon, but like cinnamon, it, maybe but it's like cardamom, um, cardamom, like uh, yeah. almost like pine uh, a pumpkin pie spice, um, even a little bit of allspice. I would I'm say. I'm thinking allspice uh -huh. too. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it smells great. What a, what a nose. So yeah, this was obviously not at twelve dollars ninety nine cents. This was you not the, the usual budget. <laughs> but um, you know, when when you when you plan a budget, most of the time, when occasionally when something like this comes up, and let's face it, thirteen dollars for this beer is not a big, you know, uh, not a surprise. Not not a huge yeah. amount of money. And this actually does have a bottled on date. I'm seeing here uh, oh. eleven eighteen of sixteen. So. Okay. And this isn't the first batch. Uh, I think this is probably the second time. Yeah. Released yeah. I, I, I remember seeing, uh, it probably um, would have been, I'm guessing, 2015, seeing a, right. a poster up in, in Olympia at Gravity Beer Market in Olympia. Gravity Beer Market, if you're in Olympia, Washington, go to Gravity Beer Market and buy your beer there. Because so, they're awesome. They're awesome. I can't say from experience. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So cheers. Cheers. Let's give this a shot. Cheers to all you... Uh, Yankee fans out there, because uh, we owe you an apology. Okay, no, we don't. <laughs> so all you Red Sox and Tiger fans. Honestly, this is almost like a beer malted. Um, yeah, it's got a malt. It's that it's, malty. It has and it has that chocolatey milk. Like when you get that, that malted yeah. at the at the at baseball, you know the ones you eat with the wooden spoon that they give you. Um, mm -hmm. Imagine if somebody took one of those, fermented it. And uh, that's that's kind of what I'm getting here is is the fermented chocolate malted. Uh, yeah, it's not your normal imperial stout. I mean, imperial stouts are always going to be you know blast you with uh, cocoa and baking cocoa and uh, mm -hmm. cocoa nibs or coffee or espresso any of that stuff. I mean, you do get all that in this beer, obviously, but there's more to it than that. It's I'm maltier more, than you know, normal. Now yeah. tasting this, I'm thinking more malts or not ma malts, uh, more stouts. Could possibly use a little bit of that honey. I'm liking this because, as Tony said, there's there's cocoa, but it's cocoa notes. I'm not sitting here feeling right. like I'm just had a mouthful of Hershey's, you know, <laughs> semi-sweet powder like you do sometimes just with some of these berries. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this is like a good balance mm -hmm. of, and there's you know there is a slight alcohol burn, but for a nine percent right. beer, 
Not not very no, heavy it's, though. It's, I mean, it's not heavy. Again. It's actually kind of easy to drink uh, for a nine percent. Yeah. And it's got a smoothness to it, so it makes it very. Uh, you kind of you're ready for another sip pretty quickly after having your first. Slight sip. spikiness. Um, it's still it's still uh, I would say uh, medium low. But honestly, for a uh, a stout, even medium low is kind of high for a stout because stouts usually have that low low. Uh, mouthfeel more the alcohol burn. I'm digging the head. It's very uh, it's, very it's like fluffy and creamy and uh, let's see if we can see if it's I pretty groovy actually. Right. We can look at the racing. Yeah, oh, it's it's really uh, a really maybe I should do where we don't have head. a Tanea Creek uh, logo <laughs> right in the way if I'm trying to demonstrate the, the lacing. But uh, there we go. Let me show. Yeah, that's a yeah. good shot right there. Very uh, welcoming sight. Mm -hmm. You see an imperial stout that has that kind of. Uh, Brazilian head, it's like just real silky and creamy kind of looking. It's it's very tasty, very good beer. If you like Imperial Stouts, you're gonna totally dig this beer. The more uh, the air gets to this too, the the way the um, when when this first opened up, I was smelling each individual uh, uh, part uh, aroma in the bouquet. Now I would say I'm getting the overall aroma, the aroma of this beer in specific, not the malts and the but. Right. When this beer creates its own smell, this is finally what I'm getting, and it's uh, and on the back it's... end of it, after you get a little bit of time and the aftertaste uh, kind of starts kind of building in your in your throat a little bit, it's very toasty and very uh, mm -hmm. warming. Yeah, it is. Very, it is very uh, warming. It's that warming effect of alcohol without the burn. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's got a really nice toastiness to it. Uh, so it kind of it kind of stays with you for a little while. So. Now I'm starting to get almost like a, uh, uh, a nut. Um, yeah, there's uh, a nut presence there. It's, uh, yep. uh, hazelnuts maybe, very mellow nuts. I wouldn't go so far as pecan, but uh, maybe like a cashew sort of, cashew, the, the, the lesser flavored nuts. Uh, right. Good. But for the money, I mean, like <laughs> I said, you know, Dogfish Head does it again, man. They, yeah. they just don't make a bad beer. They make everything well. They make everything fun. They're playful. I mean, they got everything you want in a brewery, man. That's exact. That's just it. You know, you take some risks. They take a lot of risks. I don't know too many breweries that take as many risks as Dogfish. Um, so, you know, like that uh, IV, that uh, that IPA. The Hulod. Hulod yeah. that yeah, they yeah, made. The, I mean, uh, that's... 600 some odd uh, IBU. Yeah, some beer, like, yeah. just intense, intense, intense IPA that uh, mm -hmm. was only available for a short time at their, at their site in Delaware. Mm -hmm. But that's an example of what I'm talking about. Dogfish is just infamous for... Uh, very well, even their their slogan, off centered ales for off centered people. Exactly. Yeah. And so that means they even have a cool logo or a slogan. So they got everything, man. They got <laughs> well, you know, I saw this. Uh, this is one of those, um, as I've mentioned before in previous reviews, uh, how I kind of got tired looking at the same shelves of total wine and decided to hit uh, Corey's and, and Top Shelf. Top Shelf was the first place that I went to. And I saw this and I thought, you know, as long as I've been seeing Bitches Brew, I mean, all the years I've been looking at it thinking, one day, one day, yeah. and I thought, hell, today's the day. Just do it. And um, I, I think sometimes you have to do that with beers when you you want something yeah. and you've, you've been wanting it for a while. You're going to treat yourself sometimes. Yeah, you and, and this is one of those. And, 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 if, and if I might uh, add uh, for our, our, our loyal viewers over the months and years, um, he's still blue-collar at heart, but to make a long story short, he's also a uh, received a lot more hours at work and better pay. So maybe his idea of blue collar now will be three ninety nine for a single bottle instead of one ninety nine. We're still trying to bring it in as close to two dollars <laughs> as humanly possible. And I will say this, uh, for those of you in the Northwest, collar. it's a hell of a lot easier to do that than it is down here in the bare desert of uh, Las Vegas. Indeed. But that's neither here nor there. And I see that we've got less than a minute left. Um, so I say, say I'm going to be giving this a 4.5. Uh, this came very this is one of those few times when the beer actually lived up to uh, the hype. And, yeah. um, and Dogfish, you know, if there's any of you watching, love your beers. Another feel great, free to send them to Vegas. Another we'll, great uh, job. We'll be glad to review them. We will represent. We will Indeed. not disappoint you. Until and next, next week, time. Next week we're going to do a local beer. So That's right. Yep. We'll uh, see you then. Okay. And until then. Until then, drink good beer. Don't break the bank doing it. And cheers. Cheers. Later, everybody. Go Tigers.